Hey everyone, it's Dr. Mesh and welcome to Facebook Live. It's Labor Day and I'm taking a walk along the Charles River in Boston. But in honor of National Menopause Awareness Month, I wanted to do Facebook Live. I'm going to try and do one every day and bring you a little bit of fun and entertainment, but also some short things that will inform you so you can figure it out and not have to tough it out. Now my last Facebook Live last Thursday was on when does menopause end but today I'm going to ask the question when does menopause start? I see Maureen is saying hello Maureen welcome. I hope you're having a great Labor Day and I hope you're not laboring over menopause. Now today here's what we're going to be talking about it's a menopause quiz and we're going to be asking you uh, when does menopause start? Now answer A is Maureen, I need this. Okay, well you are in the right place. At Answer A is when does menopause start? A, age 48. B, how many of you think it starts at 48? Just say yes or no. B is age 51. C is age 55, D is age 57. So A is 48, B is 51, C is 55, and D is 57. If you want, you can put down yes for any one of those. You can write your answer in. Maureen is saying 48. And you know, it does start at 48 for some people, but the mean age of menopause is 51 in the United States. So 51 is the mean age, but what that means is, is that some people are going to start earlier and some later. Now it turns out that 5 to 10% of women actually go into menopause before age 45, and that's called early menopause and one in a hundred women goes into menopause at age 40 or below. So my goodness, age 40. And the symptoms can start up to 10 years before that. So if you're having symptoms like hot flashes, mood swings, foggy thinking, can't remember where you parked the car, you're having weight control, you're having vaginal dryness, you're having palpitations in your chest and you happen to be 38 or 40 or 42 or 45, it could be signs of early menopause. And that's a really important thing for you to know. Now the things that you can do when menopause starts to kind of confirm whether or not you are in early menopause is you can get a blood test called an FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. And FSH is a pituitary hormone, pituitary gland is right there. It goes up as estrogen in your bloodstream goes down. So you can go to your doctor and get an FSH test. That will give you a clue about what's happening. Veronica, I'm 55 years old and I'm still on it. You know, women can go all the way until they're 60 and not go into menopause. And menopause is defined as one year after your last period. So it can go a long range, all the way from before 40 on the one hand to 60 or beyond on the other hand. That's quite a range of times. So you've got to realize if your symptoms have you running for mental health help or they're running to the urogynecologist for your bladder or you're getting vaginal dryness, you're having all these different symptoms, you have to realize that all of it, all of it could be under the one header of menopause or even early menopause. The thing that's important about it is you need to be proactive. You need to get started doing the things that can help you. For instance, you can be taking omega-3s. You can be getting on calcium. Tammy is saying, I was thrown into menopause early because of a hysterectomy at age 38. I'm still, I cannot see that, about twice a month. And let's see, I'm 51 now. I'm still moody about twice a month. You know, the thing that's important to realize is that when you go in early menopause, that can put you at increased risk for certain things, for heart disease, 
for emotional changes such as moodiness, one of the things that can really help you is to get on hormone therapy. As a matter of fact, my new book, The Estrogen Fix, is coming out September the 19th. And for people who go and get it at estrogenfixbook.com, estrogenfixbook.com, I'm also giving nine free gifts to people as a thank you. But if you have moodiness, you can either cheat the moodiness with medicine for mood or potentially with hormones. Now, Josie is saying, does over-the-counter pills really help and do I need to get to the doctor? Okay, so over-the-counter medicine for early menopause or for menopause in general, here's what's important. Some of the over-the-counter medic over medicines will work up to a point, but they're not all perfect. So you might get to lower the heat if you're having hot flashes, but it may not take them away. You may get some improvement in sleep, but it may not take them away. So here's what you have to do. Try them for up to three months. If they're not helping you, try a different one. Don't add it, but try a different one. All this is in my book, The Estrogen Fix and it gives all the alternatives to estrogen too. But if you're not getting relief in three to six months of changing your alternative medications, go see your gynecologist about getting hormone therapy because that will remove your symptoms the majority of the time. Let's see. Josie is saying, does over the counter, oh, it's the same question, sorry for that. So anyway, I want to keep these short and sweet and if you have any questions just let me know uh, let's put them in now and I'll be back again tomorrow doing another Facebook live if you have a topic that really matters to you let me know because I'm gonna be covering all things menopause Lynn is saying any advice on taking Ambien I do have advice on Ambien it's a medicine for sleep Here's what you have to realize about Ambien. Ambien can be addictive. You've got to be careful. If you use it a long time, you may have trouble getting off. Use it for two weeks, use it for four weeks, use it for six weeks, but if you're on it for six months longer, you should be on something else that can help you. Try something that's not a medicine. Try cognitive behavioral therapy. That's a form of like hypnosis where you teach yourself how to do uh, relaxation methods, do mindfulness, do yoga, do Tai Chi, but Ambien will become addictive for you and you'll have a hell of a time getting off. It's really hard to get off, so don't stay on it a long time, okay? Um, Veronica is saying, uh, I asked my doctor for a hormone test and she said no. I'm sorry to hear that because you should ask your doctor and get that. If you can't get that, you should try and get a second opinion. That's what I would do. Because you need to know if your body is going through this transition. There's so much that you can do. And you want to be proactive. You've got to be proactive because, you know, the symptoms last for three years, five years, six years for most people but they can last up to 10 years. But let me tell you, here's what's important. The silent symptoms, the symptoms like heart disease, the symptoms like osteoporosis, losing your bones, the symptoms like changes in your bladder, those things happen longer over time. You want to be proactive about this. Uh, Lisa, you're very welcome. I see Nina here joining in. Hi, Nina. I know Nina is in Florida. I hope that there are people here from all over and if you are in Texas, I just want to say again that I hope you fared well in the Hurricane Harvey. I know my mom is there, my sister is there, I have cousins and friends there, I know a lot of people suffered there and I hope everyone is doing as well as they possibly can after a terrible, terrible uh, storm. At least Florida got saved on that one and New Orleans from Katrina and so forth, but this was a bad, bad storm. Anyways, I want to wish you all a happy Labor Day. I hope that you are not laboring on menopause, but if you have questions, let me know. Come back tomorrow or every day this month. We're going to be doing Ask Dr. Mesh, and also go to Estrogen Fix Book, estrogenfixbook.com, get the Estrogen Fix, 
and you will also get nine free gifts along with it. Thanks so much for joining me today. Let's see, is there one last question here? Jackie is saying, Jackie is saying, I definitely have the mood swings and the weight gain. Those are two of the most common symptoms and there's a lot that you can be doing about it. And Jackie is saying 48 years old. As I said, the age doesn't matter because you could be going into menopause anytime from in your below 40 until the age of 60. So it's not about age. It's about transition. Like puberty is a transition, so is menopause. Well, this is Dr. Mesh. We've been talking today about when does menopause begin? There's a lot to know and there's a lot of things I'm gonna be talking about. I'll have a quiz for you tomorrow as well. I hope you'll join me on Ask Dr. Mesh on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for taking a moment out of your labor day. Talk to you soon.